If you've been an Android owner for some time, you're probably familiar with Android's Easter eggs. With each iteration of their operating system, Google will hide an Easter egg for you to find. To get the latest one, click on Settings, click on About Phone, followed by Android version, and then tap on Android 13 three times. You have to tap pretty fast, so if it doesn't work for you the first time, just continue tapping until you bring up the clock. Now it's just a matter of moving the position of the hands to one o'clock. And there we are, circling your finger around the 13, will cycle through all your different screens. If you want to save one of the screens as a wallpaper, the easiest way to do this is to take a screenshot. Simultaneously press the power and the volume down button to take the shot. In this example, I'm gonna take several and then use an app to automatically change my background every minute to show all the different Easter egg screens. So, to do this, keep creating your screenshots until you think you have enough. Then switch to the App Store and download an app called Auto Changer Wallpaper. Open the app and select Album from the menu. Give your album a name and choose the location of your photos. Because mine are screenshots, I'll click on Pictures followed by Screenshots. And now it's just a case of clicking on the ones you want to select. Once selected, click on the tick and go back to the menu. And there you see my new album with my five images. Click on next photo to start, followed by set wallpaper, and then choose between home screen or home screen and lock screen. And there you have it. Your wallpaper will now cycle through all of your Easter egg images. By default, the wallpaper will change every 30 minutes, but you can shorten the interval by going back into the app and clicking on schedule. So there you have it, that is how to find the Easter egg in Android 13 and set it as your wallpaper. If you missed my video earlier in the week where I discussed my favorite Android 13 features, then here it is again. So I have to admit the release of Android 13 has kind of taken me by surprise. I may have missed it, but I didn't notice a big media push by Google highlighting all of the new features. Certainly nothing like we tend to see with each new release of iOS. Now, let's talk about iOS. And maybe that's because most Android users won't see this update until later in the year, but maybe more so because there's simply not a lot that is visually different in this update. All that design stuff happened last year with the introduction of Material U in Android 12. But that doesn't mean that Google has dropped the ball or you should be disappointed because in many ways the Android 13 update is very important and here's why. First up, one of the biggest things to come from this update, which will be celebrated by lots of Pixel owners, is the amount of bug fixes that it includes. Android 12 was an absolute shocker for bugs. And then slowly ever since it came out, it's gotten more and more buggy. The guys at Android Police have counted over 100 bug fixes in Android 13, resolving issues with the battery, charging, Bluetooth, the camera, the display, etc, etc. The complete list is documented on Google's blog pages, which I'll link to in the description for those that are interested in that type of thing. But hopefully what that means for all of us is that Android 13 will make for a much smoother, more stable user experience. The second important feature of this update is improvements to security and privacy. Android has come a long way on this front after dragging the chain for many years. A lot has gone on behind the scenes. For example, Google says that they are actively scanning 125 billion apps per day to identify security issues, as well as blocking 1.5 billion spam messages per month. And later this year, they'll be rolling out their new privacy and security page, which will use simple color schemes to highlight any dodgy apps you may have installed. However, what you'll notice immediately in this update is that apps now have to request permission to send you notifications rather than you manually having to opt out. Security permissions have also been enhanced for accessing your photos and other media. The new privacy changes in 13 means that when you want to share a photo or video, you don't have to give the app carte blanche full access to your whole photo gallery. Instead, the Photo Picker API will now allow you to limit access to individual photos and albums. Another useful privacy update in 13 is that apps that use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi access no longer require location permissions. 
Previously, apps that scanned for Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled devices, such as a baby monitor, well, they would require location permission, allowing them to potentially harvest all of your location data. With Android 13, Google has now fixed this flaw. These apps will now simply function just fine without accessing your location. In fact, no app should be able to track your location unless you specifically want it to, such as a fitness tracker, for example. The final security enhancement I wanted to highlight is the clipboard. Android 13 will now recognize and delete sensitive information from the clipboard history automatically after a short period of time. So if you copy a password or account number, it won't remain on your clipboard for other apps to access it. In fact, the whole of the clipboard has received quite a cool upgrade. Now, when you select and copy text, you'll see a pop-up in the bottom corner of the screen, allowing you to edit what you've copied before you paste it. Having made your edits, click on done, and then you have the option to either directly share it with friends or copy and paste your text into another app, like Google Keep, for instance. Another couple of enhancements that I like that are not related to security or privacy is the improved battery widget, which will now show you all your other connected devices, including how much charge you have left in your Pixel Buds if you use those. There are also a couple of nice additional quick setting tiles, including one for a QR scanner, which seems kind of pointless to me because surely you can achieve the same result just by opening the camera app. I don't know, but maybe I'm missing something there. There is also now another tile to toggle one-handed mode, which will allow you to pull down the entire screen when you slide your thumb down over the bottom of the phone. Remember, you can rearrange your quick setting tiles by swiping down twice from the top of your phone, clicking on the edit button, and then dragging your tiles to rearrange them. Whilst double tapping on the back of your phone has been available for some time, Android has now added the torch as an additional option. Open up settings, scroll down to system, click on gestures, and choose quick tap to start actions. Having enabled quick tap, choose toggle torch from the options. Then it's just simply a matter of double tapping to turn it on and double tapping again to turn it off. Or if you're a Harry Potter fan, you know that you can always cast a quick spell. Hey Google, Lumos. There we go. So those are some of the things to look out for in Android 13. If you found the video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hitting subscribe for lots more useful tips and tricks. And if you own a Mac, you might also be interested in an easy way to transfer your files to and from your Android phone. And there's also an easy way to screen record your phone to a computer. Until next time, my name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching.